Support for Flying Valiant Builds is brought to you by First and 64th Customs on YouTube, where no diecast is safe. Video Geek Productions, all business, all geek. Brian Smith YouTube channel, clever schemes for fun and profit. A generous grant from the Jonathan Von Esch Foundation and from support from viewers like you. Please like, share, and subscribe. All right, Hanson Speed Shop Budget Gasser Challenge. $5 versus baller. Oh boy. Here we go. Hey there folks, Chuck here. Welcome to part two of my series based on the Hanson Speed Shop $5 gasser build off. In part one, you saw me drive all over town to spend as little as possible to build a gasser from the Hot Wheels Split Window 63 that my patrons selected. In this episode, which I apologize in advance for, I look at what it would cost to build another barn find Corvette dragster if you were to truly start from scratch and try to replicate my current setup. In the interest of length, I'm leaving out things like the video production part of the build and focusing solely on what you see on camera. Prices are based on the price tags that I found on items that still had them, receipts that I was able to find, or comparable items on Amazon or other places I found online. They do not reflect any special sales, deals, or freebies that I've received, and the final number is not what I actually paid. It's simply an exercise in how much it could cost you if you were to wake up one day, decide you wanted to do one custom Hot Wheels, and buy everything as it sits this week in 2020. Got an idea how much you think it will cost? Pause the video and put in the comments what you think the total will be. Go ahead, I'll wait. Oh, and while you're down there, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell so you can catch my next video. Okay, ready? Hang on. This is going to be a wild ride. Let's boogie. This particular Corvette has been in my family since 1993, but since again we're starting this exercise as if you're starting from scratch, we're going to go over to eBay and see what a comparable one would cost you. Looks like it would be about $5 plus $4.75 in shipping, so we're already off to a great start. Time for a dip in the strawberry jam jar full of aircraft stripper and some easy off to take off the chrome. This chrome was very hard to take off, by the way. Then some Sonic Cleaner full of Mean Green to get rid of all the residue and get things started on our little paper bag base. And away we go. We're gonna start with the windshield, dipping it in the Pledge Floor Gloss to give it a shine and use the razor saw and X-Acto knife to get rid of that pesky spare tire indent on the back of the interior and file it smooth with an emery board. Use the little styrene to fill in the back area and cut it to fit with my X-Acto knife and used some CA glue to hold it in place. I used a 3D printed steering wheel that I had that was free, sort of, we'll get to that in a minute, and wire wheeled the body off to get it ready for primer. I used my micro drill bits to drill a hole for the opening in the hood and then use the jeweler saw with a spiral blade, which I don't know why I didn't know about spiral blades before. They're amazing. They make things so much quicker and make my cuts so much straighter. And it was off to the paint booth for some sealer on the base and the body. And I used some special plastic primer for the interior. I drilled some holes to make a roll bar and used this styrene coated metal rod to make a roll bar. I chose light gray for the lake pipes because I wanted as the base for it to look like really corroded chrome and steel, which usually turns more gray, especially on an exhaust pipe that gets really hot. I use my detail brushes to get in there and simulate some torn foam using old parchment craft paint. And I stippled a little metallic on the lake pipes to give the look of leftover chrome and then drilled out the ends on the plastic base. It was much easier to do this on the plastic base than it was with the metal base car and dabbed in some polyscale grimy black to get me the depth effect. I'm finally starting to figure out this MIG dust wash. It just takes a little bit of a thicker application and some more play around to make it work right. I kind of sealed everything with a matte coat on the chassis, then went to the interior and turned to my Tamiya weathering powder kits. I really like both of these. I have set C and set A and 
Both of them are very handy for quickly and effectively applying pigment. And then I went over everything with some Deco Art Ultra Matte. I just got some Vallejo Ultra Matte as well, and I want to do a comparison because the Vallejo is three times as expensive as the Deco Art, and I want to see if it's really worth the money. I found some photos of Corvette Stingray with the headlights open. I wanted to do one open headlight, so I chopped out a headlight and went into Tinkercad and designed my own headlight to fit in the spot. And then it was off to the 3D printer to print some extra pieces, including the headlight and the gas tank that I designed for the front of this. Then I uh, dip in alcohol. Some curing under the UV light. I found this really great photo of this barn find Corvette and I, I used it in my previous video and you'll see it again in the link in the description below. Just a really great example of peeling paint on fiberglass. I went with dark blue this time around. Evan, one of my patrons, suggested blue. He wanted an electric blue, but I chose a more dark blue and I thought it was a good contrast between the red of the first vet and the blue on the second vet. I used polyscale light undercarriage gray and this is aged concrete to give it kind of a mottled appearance on the fiberglass that was exposed. And then this is another practice that I'm starting with my builds is just to kind of go over anything that might be seen that you don't want to be seen in black. I use this polyscale Grammy black. It's a really good one coat black and it dries flat. So it's basically a go away, don't look at me color. I used the Maltow pen on the bumpers and then I used this deco silver on the trim. I really like mixing up the metallics. I got some really great decals from SE Redline. I really like his stuff because not only does he do white but he also does foil decals which is super hard to find on custom decals and I found a couple of sets that I really like from him and I got them by happenstance because you can buy his scratch and dent decals as a batch for a really low price, but I chose to record these if I had picked these two sets of decals purposely for this kit. I think ultimately what I should have done is done the decals much sooner on this build than I did because I had to go back over and simulate the chipping again with the gray and the aged concrete. It turned out okay, but I think next time around I'll put the decals on first. I need some Tester's Clear Red in the taillights and my favorite headlight color, Oyster White. I found this really great 3D printed engine design and it was, I think, originally designed for 124 or 132 scale and I scaled it down to 164. And I used a little floral wire to, to simulate a belt on the front of the engine for the superchargers. It started with some light gray paint as a primer because I already had some out. I got these wheels off of an M2 Torino kit. It was a dragster kit that came with like three extra sets of wheels and it was perfect for this. At this point I had kind of decided I, I was really liking how the body on this was going and I understand why people love gassers they're just not for me and since the gasser challenge was over I chose at this point to build this more as a dragster than an actual gasser style build just because I was really liking how this body was going and I was like you know what I'm gonna build this one for me the rest of the way I had some brass tubing in the budget build we used plastic q-tips which is great this was just a, another way to mix it up and I, I like the brass tubing because it holds up a little better and takes the glue way better than the plastic does. And I switched out my Gundam markers for the Sharpie Ultrafine brown and black and very happy with that decision. They've been doing very well as far as getting details done. I used my Vallejo rust stain and streaking kit on the engine a lot. I wanted to start with kind of a rusty orange base instead of the bright orange that would normally be on a Chevy engine just to simulate the faded orange. A little point on here, I had some blue tack on the toothpick to kind of hold it in place, but I ended up just holding the engine. I went over all the chrome with some MSP metallic. I think this was tarnished steel just to kind of dull the chrome and make it a little easier to take pigments later. I love raised white lettered wheels, but raised yellow letter wheels are something even at another level. Using the Dremel tool with the adjustable chuck means that I can just put the axles into the chuck and run the wheels over some sandpaper at a low speed. I, I don't go above 5,000 RPM and that really does a great number on weathering the wheels very quickly. I used MSP tarnished steel on the top of the engine in the supercharger and then I had this antique gold craft paint that I used 
on the valve cover and um, the carburetors. I stippled it onto the valve covers to make it look like they were originally painted gold. And then I went back over everything again with some more of the dust effects from MIG. I really like this filter set. And uh, I did the details like the recessed vents in the hood with my homemade black brown wash. I got this really cool engine and steel weathering set from AK Interactive and it all the stuff that you see here, these really great pigments and washes and stuff. They've got this one engine grime that I liked so much, I ended up going back over the vents and stuff and used it as a wash to fill in the dark areas just because it had this really great black-brown finish. And there's this really nice engine oil that's a gloss and the, the pigments are just fantastic. I really, really like this kit. I had some AK Interactive pigment binder as well that I brush over everything so I don't brush off the pigments with my fingers as I'm manhandling these things around the workbench. And you just brush it on and let it dry. It's fantastic stuff. I then realized that there was still some fitment issues once I added the axles. I should have made the axles narrower. So instead of busting up all the glue I had, I decided I would just cut the car. <laughs> so, you know, when in doubt, cut the car. Uh, don't do that. Try to avoid cutting the car if at all possible. But at this point, I was like, I need to get this done. And this is a faster way to do it. Once I got the engine fitted, I dabbed in some CA glue. Here I am going back over everything with the engine grime wash. I just really liked how this stuff flowed and it sticks right to the crevices and creates this really nice depth effect. Here's some final ultra matte clear getting brushed onto the car. I used some more of the ultra matte to cloud up the windows a little bit and get the look of delaminated windows. And I like to wait until everything's just about done to use a toothpick to get some gloss varnish on the headlights to give them a little bit of a glassy sheen because it does do a really good job of making the headlights look like glass, but it also is very easy to mess up that effect. So I try to, again, wait until I'm handling it as little as possible before I add that effect. And with that, it was time to put everything back together. This was a glue together because I had to take out the post to make the hole for the engine. I used a little more pigment fixer on the wheels to finish them up and make sure they held the weathering powders that I put on them. Then I affixed the 3D printed gas tank in its spot between the split bumpers. I have this really cool inkjet printable foil that I use sometimes to make license plates and it's tricky if you don't have a way to print on white. Again, I'm working on a way to print white ink, but in the meantime, this still does a pretty good job because the foil is so reflective that in certain lights, things look white. So I printed out a bunch of my preferred license plates, including this Bicentennial Michigan plate that I really like, and decided to put that on as the license plate and use my HP Envy all-in-one printer to print everything out. You can see it really catches the light nicely, but a little too much. So I used some Doc's weathering powders to dull it down a bit. And that was that. It was time to put on the special decal using my clear printable decal paper, which means you can barely see the V, but it's there, and put the 0012 on it and call build number 12 done. Okay, decaled and numbered, that means it's time to look back at where we started. A 1993 vintage version of the Hot Wheels Split Window 63 that goes for around $5 on eBay plus shipping, and here's where we ended up. Another barn fine dragster waiting to be discovered. I really love how this one turned out. Weathering fiberglass is an interesting challenge, and while I'm looking forward to getting back to rusty builds, this two-car project was certainly fun to test something new. So are you ready? Time for the total. Were you keeping track? Here it comes. $1,902.15. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's more than I paid for the actual truck that I drive every day. So, uh, yeah. Uh, well, this has been a fun exercise. I, I guess the big lesson here is to take your time, let the deals find you, and slowly build up your supplies as you go. Also, if you're going to get into this hobby, maybe build more than one car, and that can help spread the costs out a little bit. And finally, this is why buying custom diecasts from builders is expensive. I hope this was helpful if you're thinking of picking this up as a hobby. As you've seen, you can get great results with five bucks and a little gumption, or if you really want to dive in the deep end, it can turn out really good as well. What do you think of the end results between the two cars? Was this one worth the extra effort? Let me know in the comments below. 
All right, you saw the bandit level patrons at the start of this video, but I'd also like to shout out my Rockford level patrons, Evan at Mid Island Custom Diecast. Please check out his custom diecast channel. My amazing wife, Carolyn, which reminds me to remind you to support your local educators as they're going through an incredibly tough time right now. The Douglas level patrons are the Drew Rants and Raves podcast, Jordan Kleinen, and the Curtis Crafts YouTube channel. There's links to everybody's info in the description down below. Please check them out and let them know that I sent you. You know, thanks to my patrons, I've got a really cool special coming up with a uh, fellow builder, Gunslinger Garage. They already know what it is because as patrons, they get access to all sorts of cool stuff like behind the scenes access, sneak peeks, downloadable versions of the 3D files that and designs that I work with, one-on-one -on -one interactions, and monthly giveaways. So if you're interested in supporting the channel, please check the description below or visit flyingvaliant.com. If you like what I do and you find yourself in a position to help keep things rolling, I would really appreciate it. And if not, of course, liking, sharing, and subscribing are always fantastic and free ways to support what I do. If you like a car in my video, all of them are currently for sale unless otherwise noted. You can email me at flyingvaliant at gmail.com if you'd like to buy one of my builds or commission a special build for yourself. I look forward to hearing from you. All right, that's enough of that business. Thanks again for coming along with me for the ride. So until next time, stay fresh, cheese bags.